Good evening, folks. It's Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project, Magnetic Reversal News, Shinrin, Yoku, and Yurt Life, bringing you a grand solar minimum update Monday, February 19th, 9 p.m. Mountain Time, 2024. Ancient human story about the seven sisters, otherwise known as the Pleiades, may have survived from 100,000 BCE. Can you believe that? Keep calm. It's boom time. Wet winter storm hits California, closing the regional airport and trapping people in swollen rivers. It gets worse. California Atmospheric River brings downpours. Tornado threat and leaves 37 million on flood watch. Holy macaroni. Nearly the entire pop population of California is under flood alerts as rain drenches the state. And the good news is that power outages have dropped by 50%, just down to 11,000. So not that severe as far as the power goes. Here is the snowfall analysis from the last 24 hours ending this morning, which means that the totals will be much higher. But there was areas of three foot or more up in Northern California and four or more feet is coming to the region, which is good news. The entire region is at or near normal. It is the northern states that need more snow. Ho, ho, ho. And we may be getting that. Take a look at the atmospheric river currently descending on California. It's going to be there for three, six, nine, at least two more days in some capacity. Here we are on Wednesday and into Thursday. It's going to linger through Thursday and then diminish when at the same time, a nor'easter develops, and that's going to bring heavy precipitation to the eastern coast, all the way down to Florida, up to Maine. It's insane. Let's take a look at the GFS model for the snow totals. Here we are in the next three, six, nine, 12 hours. We're looking at hours of powers up to two feet of snow in the Sierras as that system moves east. Here is Wednesday. Through Thursday morning, most of the high elevation in the northern Rockies will be pelleted with snow. Good news, as well as the northern states. Let's walk it through Thursday, through Friday. By that time, Thursday and Friday, heavy snow moving into the northeast, including Maine, New Hampshire, Vermont, and the Adirondacks specifically. Saturday, Sunday, that will be our fun day as another system makes its way into the west here early in the week. By Monday, a huge system will move into the west, bringing epic snow to the Sierras and most of the high northern Rockies, which go all the way, well, the entire Rockies. Take a look at these snow totals. It's epic. This is through the end of the month, and then that system is going to move east, bringing more snow to the northeast, and it's looking like we have a record Spring, ding, ding, as far as snow. Ho, ho, ho. Shut up, Al! Get your hole! We can't stand Al Gore. Seismic update. No quakes of note. Normal activity worldwide. A slight uptick here in Peru with some 5 magnitude activity. Some 5 magnitude, 5.2 in Pakistan at 44 kilometers of depth. Most of this is just normal activity and not to be worried about. Worldwide volcano news. We've got Liwotolo. Volcano in the lesser Sunda Islands of Indonesia. Lava flow descends into the southern flank. Makes for good pictures. Also, Fuego to 15,000 feet today. Abico also puffing to 10,000. We've got Nevada de Ruiz to 20,000 feet. Raventador to 15,000 today. Chivalouche apparently puffed and passed, but is not identifiable in the satellite. Samaru also active today. And Popo to 19,000 feet. And that wraps up our worldwide Volcano News update. Seismicity on Iceland has gone flat, although we did have just a pop a moment ago, but that is coming from Grimsvoten and Bartabunga on the Vatna Yokel. So we're going to keep a close eye on these other outliers as we have predicted a major eruption on a major volcano in Iceland during the same time as the Reykjanes eruption. Now, the Reykjanes Peninsula is slated with the uplift and the current knowledge of the ongoing volcanic eruption to erupt sometime in the first week of March. So, mark my words, that will happen. Space Weather News, 
some low-level C-level C-flare activity from the new sunspot that is turning around the limb and is quite spectacular. A big baby that could be earth-facing in just about five days straight at us. So we're going to keep a close eye on that active region, uh, and that would be active region 3590. So heed the warnings, 3590 could be going squirrely. Let's take a look at the sunspot summary and see what they say about 3590. Magnetic class is currently beta, which means there's minor mixing. We're going to wait till it gets to delta class. Currently only just 1% X-flare. This is a pretty evenly mixed magnetic sunspot, which means it doesn't have much flare potential. As a look over the entire sunspot, array on the disk, just a 1% chance of X-flares. That's why flaring is in the low level at C currently. We do have a tiny coronal hole, number 91, and it's compatriot, which has no number. That will be facing Earth in about three days. So that is the only hope for any geomagnetic activity or perhaps seismic uptick. We have a three-day geomagnetic forecast at all calm, and we are down at psychic levels in the last few days. Apparently, you already knew that. Now, Martians are wanted. NASA is seeking four aspiring astronomers astronauts to live in a 1700 square foot Mars simulation for a year. And if we all know about what happened with Biosphere 2, this could be a debacle and it probably won't work. In fact, the entire idea of humans living on Mars is a pipe dream because the cosmic rays alone are impossible to subjugate, let alone the trip there and the fact that your muscles are, anyway. That's a whole nother podcast. So good luck to Elon Musk and all the schmucks going to Mars. Life spreads across space on tiny invisible particles, according to a new study. It is true, and Lee and I have talked about that, and we're going to be doing another podcast maybe this weekend on panspermia. Does life appear independently on different planets and galaxies? Of course it does, because all life is seeded through panspermia, yes. Co comets and asteroids are moving through space with tiny pieces of biological material, including carbon, amino acids, and other things that bring life to all of the universe. And now new research shows how life could spread via basic simple pathways, cosmic dust. And that's a boom. One thing scientists have learned in the past few decades is that life on Earth might have had an early start. The Earth, in fact, is about 4.53 billion years old, and it has life on it since about 3 billion years ago in the form of thrombolites. Yes, some evidence suggests life was here even before that. Only about 500 million years after Earth formed when it had cooled down. Now, where the heck did it come from? It came from space. We've got hundreds of tons of space dust dumping upon us each and every year. And that is one of the reasons why Earth is growing year after year. Not only that, it is incorporating these biological entities from the universe, including tardigrades. But that's a whole nother podcast. Now, scientists make a breakthrough discovery while experimenting with urine. Yes, your piss. I said it. We can reuse that urine, a very significant portion of it. Uh, we can extract the cobalt, and this could be a boon to the battery industry. Can you imagine if all the humans pissed in a port and it all got sent to a factory where it extracted the cobalt? Yeah, that would be far less destructive than mining the earth in Africa and making nine-year-olds risk their lives to make your electric cars. Alter magnetism, a new form of magnetism discovered in common materials. It's been years and the magnetic studies have been epic, but we know about ferromagnetism in the 19th century, anti-ferromagnetism in the 1930s, and now alter magnetism in the 2020s. And this may be a reveal as far as, well, hidden science that the powers that be don't want you to know. While 
Other new subforms of magnetism have been discovered in recent years. Alter magnetism is perhaps the broadest newcomer and could have the most useful applications, such as, well, room temperature, superconductivity, and an emerging field of science called spintronics. And if you watched any of the videos with Ashton Forbes and the disappearance of MH370, holy macaroni, this could explain the orbs. Moving on, the largest COVID vaccine study yet finds links to health conditions. You guessed it, myocarditis and the swelling of the heart. That's the number one. The viral vector jabs also are tied to an increased risk of Julian Barr syndrome. Yeah, you want that for the rest of your life? Go get a jab. I make my point completely useless. Not only that, the jabs don't protect from infection or spreading the disease. So what the f are they for? To kill you. Who knew? Now you do. An ancient human story about the seven sisters, otherwise known as the Pleiades, may have survived from 100,000 BC. This story is so epic, it cannot be discounted. We can only see six of the stars with the naked eye today, but if we move the archaeoastronomy clock back 100,000 years, guess what happens? Seven stars become visible. Is it possible that ancient humans knew about the seven sisters for over 100,000 years and the story we tell today is based on that myth. I believe it's so. And Lee and I will cover this on the weekend on our radio podcast at revolution.radio on the internet's Saturday noon mountain time. Now, unfortunately, a chemical that may cause infertility has been found in Cheerios and Quaker Oats. And in fact, in 80% of humans. A new study showing that a little-known toxic chemical in four out of five people is inside of them. Yes. The new EWG peer-reviewed study has found chloramaquat, a little-known pesticide in four out of five people tested. The groundbreaking analysis Chloramaquat is in the bodies of people in the U.S. ringing alarm bells because the chemical is linked to reproductive and developmental problems in animal studies, suggesting the potential for similar harm to humans. And we wonder why we're all gay and our fertility rates are dropping off a cliff and the population on Earth is now dropping. Yeah, it's not you. It's not CO2. It's big ag and big pharma. And that's a boom to knowledge. Do not eat the products in the supermarket. Grow your own. Anything in the center of the supermarket in the aisles is predominantly poison and contains this chemical. So unless you're producing your own food on your own time, you don't know what's in it. And that's just the brass tacks. Please share this video. We need your support to grow. They are shadow banning us. They don't want this information to get out there. We love you. Be safe. We'll see you all at the San Luis Valley Seed Exchange at the end of March, March 30th and 31st. Be there or be square. Mm -hmm.